Hello, this is Mel from Sneakers Corner and I am going to look at slides that I used in a recent show on Al Fadi's channel, Sierra International and I've called this Mapping Out the Commonalities and these maps are inspired by the following questions really. If we think about where the likely origins of Islam are, I think if we ask these following questions I think it's pretty obvious that it happened way up in the north. Where were there Aramaic speaking people? Where were there significant Jewish communities? Where were the Christian communities? Where was the conflict between the Byzantines and the Persians? Where did Ramadan come from? Where did the Arabic script come from? Where were the centers of power? Where were the mints? Where were the centers of learning? Where were the places associated with tribes like the Ansar and the Nazarenes? Where were the centers of population? Where did Umar build a masjid? Where are the biblical locations of Abraham's stations? Where did he send Hagar away? Where do you find a Greek community from which philosophical motifs in the Quran come from? Where were, was there a community familiar with Syriac hymns, Syriac stories, Syriac apocryphal stories? Where do you find Manichaeism and Mandaism? Where do you find a history of Gnosticism? So if we look at all of those questions, again and again and again, what you discover is it points up north. It doesn't point towards the Hejaz. So let's have a look at some of these maps that are put together. So where were the stations of Abraham? Now, this is a map I've just taken from the internet. There's obviously a dispute about Ur. Um, Ur could have been down there in the southeast. I don't think so. Um, likely it was up near Haran. Um, there's a, a dispute even in the Islamic tradition as to where Ur was in relation to Haran's. One tradition says it was in Edessa, which would be northwest of Haran. Others would place it in Armenia, which would be east of Haran. But in any case, we have Ur, Haran, we have Shechem, we have uh, Bethel, Jerusalem, Hebron, Beersheba. These are key stations of Abraham that we find in the Bible. And as you can see, there is no mention of the Hejaz in, in any of these. Okay, so there's no biblical support for the idea of the station of Abraham being down in Mecca in the Hejaz. Now, here is a map that gives us an approximation of the the layout of the Christian population in the year 600. So that would be the, the lighter color there. The, the first one, the darker color, uh, shows um, the Christian population in AD 325. Okay, so the other one is 600. Um, the dark dots represent... Uh, Christian community established by the year 325 and the one with the light line around it is a place of origin of a Christian sect, for example Nestorianism um, there up in the sort of Edessa area and then Arianism down in Alexandria. Okay. Now you notice that the Christian population are predominantly theirs and the Quran is predominantly um, a Christian document, even if uh, uh, a Gnostic one or a heretical one with a lot of Jewish elements to it. You could argue it's mostly a Jewish uh, document too. But in either case, uh, you're talking about in those areas, 
um, if you stretch from Alexandria to Jerusalem to Damascus, Palmyra, Edessa, and uh, down through Iraq, that's basically where you, you, you would need to go looking to find those sort of communities. Okay, next. Um, in terms of the the idea of where Aramaic was spoken, so that pink area gives you a good idea of where Aramaic was spoken uh, in the seventh century. Um, you also see where Hebrew is spoken. Um, now the map it doesn't do it quite justice there because over here on this side there would have been a, a community of Jews in around the Kufa area. And uh, we'll look at that a bit later. But uh, essentially, if there is an Aramaic underlayer to the Quran, this is where you'd expect the Quran to have been produced and the sources for the Quran also to have come from. Um, it's the area where you'd find all of the various liturgical hymns that uh, Luling refers to. Um, the apocryphal stories in Syriac, and uh, and so on. You know, that's where you'd be looking to find them. Um, interestingly here, in green, you have Arabic, um, and presumably there's an overlap between the two areas. And so if you were really tr to nail down an area for the formation of the Quran, you'd be looking for an area like here, or perhaps over here, where there was also an Arabic speaking community in the midst of the Aramaic speaking community. Now, another interesting thing is the question of the Nabataean alphabet. It's a halfway house between Aramaic and Arabic. And this is very important because of the idea that we have texts that were originally written in Aramaic and then were transposed into Arabic at some point, the resulting document being the Quran. Um, that's a, a, a massive um, oversimplification. Um, the, certainly the, the writers of the text in the Quran were people who were very familiar with Ar Aramaic. And uh, this is made easier if you think about the fact that the Nabataean alphabet is a halfway house between Aramaic and Arabic. So the alphabet is descended from the Aramaic alphabet. So the Nabataean alphabet is descended from the Aramaic alphabet. In turn, a cursive form of Nabataean developed into the Arabic alphabet from the 4th century, which is why Nabataean's letter forms are intermediate between the more northerly Semitic scripts such as Hebrew and those of Arabic. Due to this, it was possible to transliterate from Aramaic to Arabic easily and then when you bring in the, the question of um, the diacritical marks we can now understand why there's the problems with readings of the Quran this all points to the idea that um, it would the texts were originally written up in those northern areas like in pink here on this map um, the Quran was written in a Nabataean based Arabic script that's interesting as well why the Nabataean one? It would suggest that's because that's where it it was written in the Nabataean area. Nabataean, um, the Nabataean script was also used over in uh, Hira as well. So it doesn't necessarily mean it had to be in the 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 Nabataean area per se, but it, that's where it came from. Um, all its religious terminology is either in Aramaic or Hebrew, like. Keriana, Surah, and so on. Okay, and uh, this picture here gives you an indication of how similar the letters are between Nabataean and uh, Arabic and Syriac and so on. Okay. And in addition, this Nabataean script was refined in Hira. So it started uh, in Nabatea and got refined in in uh, Hira. Hira was a Nestorian center, so that's significant, surrounded by all the Jewish academies, Pompadita, Sura, etc. Um, a key location for Jewish Christian debates, and that fits in with 
many of the the themes of the Quran. Also where there were the Manichaean promoters of Gnostic apocryphal stories of the kind found in the Quran. Okay, and uh, so if you compare both maps, um, Mahosa, that's uh, next to Tessiphon. Um, so if you look at the map on the left, you see Tessiphon, Mahosa, and Tessiphon are simply twin cities across the Tigris from each other. Okay. Um, so here is here, as it is here, and you have all of these Jewish academies right around it. Okay. So that's significant. That would suggest that this would be a good place to look if you're trying to figure out where the Quran came from. And then if you notice Manichaeism spread alongside Islam, um, we can set aside the question of which came first and all that, but they basically, over the centuries, they they were both spreading in that direction, um, right into China. And, uh, you know, that's a significant element because it had some influence uh, on Islam and the Quran and so on, uh, not to overlook the influence of Zoroastrianism and, and other religions as well. Okay, um, so you have Jewish academies here. Um, you can see all of them here. Pompatita, uh, Sura, and so on over here. So these are the sort of places you expect um, the writers of the Quran to be interacting. Now, is it a coincidence that the Shafi and Hanafi schools developed in the same place and time as the Jewish academies? There's a clear parallel uh, in terms of the Torah and the Mishnah and the Muslims with their Quran and Sunnah. Okay. Did they simply imitate what the Jews were doing? Or was it a case of that the early founders of Islam were indeed Jewish themselves? Okay, belonging to um, a heretical sect of Judaism, perhaps. Okay, so that's the, that's the thing to think about there. Now, if we look at this map here, it gives you an idea of the fact that there was a Greek community in Syria, primarily, and there was also a wider area which was Hellenized, which means it was influenced by Greek culture. Um, today, the Alawites still view the Greek philosophers as prophets, and uh, we can see how this was reflected in the Quran. For example, Galen's erroneous embryology, Thales' idea that everything is made out of water and references made to reincarnation directly from Greek philosophy. That's how I would read it. Um, this will be an area that I will return to in 2022. Okay, so this is significant. So this might be part of the overall picture. Um, what I would tend to think, and this would be following on from uh, Odin Lafontaine's ideas, is that we should give up the idea to of thinking of the Quran being written in one particular location, but kind of viewed as the work of different people at different times in different places. So this leads us to kind of um, include lots of these places up here in the north. Okay. Um, you can have a look at that there yourself. I'll just leave it for a moment, but you can see that there's a parallel between Galen and the Quran's four stage embryo development. Okay, and same for the reincarnation idea. So you can have a look at that in your own time. We have done videos on this before. Um, Haran is where the festival of Al-Fitr, where it came from. So again, this reinforces the idea of Islam originating up in the north and part of that northern culture. And in terms of the apocryphal stories, to know of these tales of the ancients, the apocryphal, the Gnostic, where would you need to be? Quran 25, 5 says, and they say tales of the ancients, which he has caused to be written, and they are dictated before him morning and evening. And uh, these tales are from a Greek Syriac milieu. Uh, St. Clair Tisdall writes in the Sources of Islam, 
on page 46 that in the prophet's day numbers of christians in arabia were not only an ignorant people but belonged to heretical sects which on account of their dangerous influence had been expelled from the roman empire and thus had taken refuge beyond the borderland they had hardly any acquaintance with the gospel or apostolic writings but were conversant with heretical books and the strag and the extravagant tales they contained these stories with rare exception are generally found in greek or syriac so again this kind of reinforces the idea of where this all came from the Quran borrows the story of jesus and the clay birds from the infancy gospel of thomas our earliest fragments of this are in greek and syriac this would suggest that the the Quranic author who referring to that story and his audience were living in that milieu and familiar with at least Aramaic and possibly Greek too. This would be consistent with a location like Syria, but anywhere in the fertile crescent is possible, but certainly not down the Hejaz. And the Hejaz, located in Arabia Deserta, or uninhabited Arabia, where not even tumbleweed exists. See the contrast. I think when you look at the, the question of the origins of Islam in terms of maps, it's pretty clear that the Hejaz is the last place you'd imagine that it all began. I think you have to go to where the cultures were, where the populations were, where the centres of learning were, and that was way up in the north. Thank you for watching.